And welcome to the 40 and Slip Daily, Weekly, the Dose something. I don't know what the fuck we're calling this shit now. It's a show. We talk about shit. And sometimes it's somewhat comical or entertaining. Today, I have my friend Corey Layton joining us for the program. Uh, he is the... Was it Sensei? Yeah. At uh, it, Enchin... What's, what's the name of it? Enchin Karate Amazing. And uh, he's been studying the martial arts for quite a while, and I, he'd, we'd met each other a few couple few years ago. I can't remember exactly how long ago it was now. He he worked for me at a a local bus company, and uh, we'd gotten to know each other. Happened to stay friends on Facebook, and after I'd started doing the show with Fred, you know, Fred's big into the MMA stuff and the. Um, martial arts in general bodybuilding oh yeah and i i threw it by fred you know maybe we should ha- see if we could get cory on to talk about the whole you know martial arts and eastern thought or eastern mysticism and that whole mix and that idea of you know mind body and spirit because it goes yeah. right along with the stuff that we generally talk about Mm-hmm. so um to give us a little background cory what uh what it, exactly what is your background uh, well, I started training in, uh, I guess it was like 1992 when I was nine, and I started just like some community building uh, in like my local town, and uh, you know something like two times a week, and uh, but I, I knew I was doing something that like a lot of people weren't doing. It was something different, you know, and so I started with that and stuck with it for probably like six years, and uh, it's funny now I think about it. It was like a UFC type style, but it was taught with like the traditional um, values and respect of a, a traditional martial arts dojo. <clears throat> but we still did all the grappling and the techniques like that. And uh, so I got to high school and I got too cool to do it. You know, I took some time off in high school and played football and then found out, oh, football is uh, very hard. And um, got my ass kicked for a while doing that. And then after high school, I decided to go back to martial arts and been doing it ever since. So like 2001, I've been uh, teaching pretty much as a profession as much as I can and uh, traveling around and learning as much as I can in other styles. I did Shotokan for a while and now I do a style called Enshin which is Kyokushin and Judo together and I really enjoy it. It's a, it's a tough style. It's not as as intense as like kickboxing and definitely not as intense as MMA but you can still you can still mix it up pretty good and fight pretty hard and definitely uh, it's definitely a challenge. It's not a not an easy thing to do. Right. And Fred, now you, your father was a black belt, correct? Yeah, he was a black belt in karate. But you, now, your, your skill in that is somewhat limited. Oh yeah, like I mean, I grew up around the martial arts community. Like my dad trained me. I never went to a uh, not until I like uh, what Corey was saying until I was in my teens, and it was actually very similar. After football, I was looking for something to do. Uh, more recreationally, and I, I did uh, karate with, uh, it actually was my dad's former best friend, who, well, I guess they were still best friends, but he had his uh, his own dojo out in the country, and did that for a while, and then switched to kickboxing, so I did that, and then tried some jujitsu, and finally, you know, I, I just, uh, I, I moved away from it a bit, but uh, it's always uh, been a part of my, uh, my life, and especially in my artwork, when you're depicting action scenes, you know, you got to have a good knowledge of, uh, of martial movements and stuff to, to help add a realism to it. Oh, yeah, definitely. And Plus, I've been kicked in the face a lot, so... Uh, <laughs> that helps. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, I, you know, like I was saying before the show, you know, to tie in the, the two things, you know, growing up, I, I think all of us had that, uh, that image of the martial arts where you've got you know the wise old asian guy teaching the young american guy about you know his customs and his traditions and and so on and so forth and there's always that mix of you know this is much more than just a fighting style or a defensive uh you know a, a thing for defense it's 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 more of like i was saying that mind body spirit thing that uh, people don't, 
I think people don't look at as much anymore, um, and I think that in a way that's that's kind of lacking. But you know, I I can remember you know of course you you've got the movies, but then you start talking to people and you you look into like you know Tai Chi and stuff like that and this this body energy, and I I just I think the two systems work really well together. Now, are they correct? You know, are, were these you know are these ancient traditions the exactly proper way to go? I don't know. I mean, I look at the Bible and I say, well, maybe some ancient traditions need a little work. But, yeah, correct. Yeah. But the framework that has been laid out, I think, is solid. And I think yeah. anyone who's practiced any of these traditions can attest to that. And I, I think you know, like Corey could attest to that. You could attest to that. That there's you know when you when you put yourself into that mindset and that discipline there's a certain you know there's a certain calmness a certain clear feeling that comes with that that's almost meditative yeah, and that's the thing like i think there's a misconception like and and cory touched on it before we started that like the truth like i mean these martial arts are are designed and based to evolve i mean a lot of times when you're following a sensei, like, I mean, his discipline was taught to him from a higher order. He's taken it, he's filtered it through a system, um, you know, he's kept the traditions, and he works on the things that appeal to him. Uh, somebody in his dojo progresses through the ranks, starts his own thing. Sure, that's his master, but they're going to present some of their own theories, and a lot of it is of a philosophical nature, you know. I, I just find that, yeah, martial arts is a great starting point for anybody that wants uh If you're looking for more than just health, yeah, there's definitely a spiritual calmness aspect to it. Yeah, I know in my I know in my karate school we have, like, six things up on the wall that you're supposed to kind of, like, live by. So yep. martial arts isn't something you just do in the karate school. It's something you carry with you everywhere. And I think when you kind of, like, constantly keep it on your mind, it's like a constant meditation. You know, I should always respect yep. people. I should always try my hardest. I should always... Uh, accept the challenge in front of me and do my best to meet it. Um, yep. I don't know. I've, I've done martial arts since I was young, so I've always kind of had that mindset. I don't know if other people have the same mindset or not. Um, but when you, you know, when you work out in martial arts, it's like, it, it's like Chris was saying, it becomes a, it becomes like a meditation almost. And it does. You, yep. If you carry it with you and you kind of meditate on it all day, you start to realize other things about yourself. And yep. I think that's what the, the kata and the movements and the repetition of the techniques over and over and over again is it's not to not to turn you into a killing machine it's to turn your mind into a different kind of machine and make it realize it's it's potential and then if you can carry that with you in other aspects of your life that's what it's that's what it's all about um, yeah and it makes it makes good people better it makes people that are struggling uh find answers uh yeah it, it like you can't help it the mind gets into that state uh similar with weightlifting i mean the repetitive motions of Doing these exercises over and over again makes your mind get into a state of calm where you start thinking, you know what, the other day in the parking lot, I could have been a little more polite to that guy. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know what, if I had done that, uh, you know, the conflict wouldn't have happened. Maybe we wouldn't have shouted at each other or whatever, you know, like uh, I was in such a hurry the other day and that elderly lady was carrying her groceries. I, I could have stopped. I could have helped her out. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of times especially in this day and age with all these external uh, distractions computers television video games cell phones i mean in a dojo it's one of the few places where you can still go and and just have peace i mean and and, and challenge your mind and and get it in balance with with your body because mm -hmm. there's a lot of that in, in the martial arts you need to have a balance well i think i think ah. when you go in when when you put yourself in that position when you uh, when you aspire to be a martial artist of whatever caliber, whatever tradition, yeah. and you step foot in that dojo, you're you're accepting the fact that you're going to have respect for it. If you're going to do if, it, you're going to have that respect. So when you when you yep. step into that, you're allowing you know that whole ideal system to be there. You, you know, it's it's not. It's not a forced thing because, you know, if you don't want it, you can walk the fuck out. Like, I, I can remember yeah. so many times going in when I was taking Shotokan, which was the only uh, tradition that I took, by the way. 
And there were kids that would fuck off in the class. And the sensei was, he, I mean, he was brutal, but he was great. Mm-hmm. Because there was this one time we were going through our fucking katas and we're fuck we're in this one position with our arms outstretched in a fucking punch, <laughs> and this motherfucker, this asshole kid, did something. I can't remember if he was snapping gum or whatever, but Tim was like, you know, he didn't say fuck you, but he was like, all right, fuck you guys, your fucking yep. arms are outstretched. This is what you get, you know, and. So we're all sitting there for, I can't even remember how long it was. It felt like an eternity. My arm felt like it was 50 pounds by the time I was done. And when it's sensei yelling at you, the arm feels even heavier. Yeah, it's it's just fucking (laughs) worse. But it's like that, it's, you accept that. Because I could have at any time put my fucking arm down, walked to the door, taken my friggin' gi off, and been like, I'm done. But I accepted the responsibility of what it was that I wanted to do. As does everybody who steps foot in that fucking dojo. But it's those assholes that those ones that that aren't really accepting the responsibility. Yeah. They, but it's funny that they kind of teach the other people, the people that are there for the respect, that are there for those ideals. They those people kind of teach those people the lessons. Well, that like the sensei, part of his job, and like the um, the sensei I had, Leroy, um, he would he would often say like uh, phrases, Bruce you know Leroy? what? Like, no, no, his name was uh, Leroy <laughs> Troop, Troop. Oh, and this guy was awesome. He had a magnificent mustache and a full hairy chest. <laughs> Back in the eighties, it was all about the hair and the mustache, man. <laughs> his dojo was great. Like he had, and that's the thing about Leroy. Like he had all these pictures of uh, the masters that he's taught with. Even one of them was Hoist Gracie, like uh, of the UFC, the the guy who won the first ever UFC. Yeah. And he would train with these guys. And one time, uh, he paid for his sunset from uh, from overseas to come over and. All of his students got to meet this uh, this kind, gentle, timid little old man. Like, I mean, he was very respectful. He was Asian. We all bowed, and we're like, wow, that guy's nice. Like, he's nothing like Leroy said. And then Leroy went upstairs to the upstairs dojo as we're getting ready to leave. And all you hear is uh, our sensei, like, I mean, getting tossed around and these slams. And, like, man, we were wondering, oh, man, what's he doing? Yeah, but, yeah, be. like. That, that's the way it is, and that there was a lot of respect and uh, a lot of camaraderie, a lot of fun. And, and that's something that, you know, like like we were talking, like uh, when the UFC started there, like a lot of that, a lot of the myths behind martial arts were dispelled. Like, like I talked about my dad uh, who got into a street fight when I was younger, and my dad was trained in martial arts, but the fight looked more like a grapple fest. Like yeah. they were... There was a lot of emotion involved, which if you've taken martial arts properly, you know that that can be one of your biggest enemies. Mm. I mean, you need to be calm and and, and cool and collective. So it, it was interesting. And now we're seeing it evolve into something that's more of a sport where these guys have to have major disciplines. And unfortunately, I don't think some of them are, are getting that, that message, that spiritual martial arts message. So let's face it, a super athlete comes in and, you know, they're already starting from a, a base that's way ahead of the average Joe. The Matrix? <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine that? No, but that's like... Neo coming in there. It's like what I was saying before we started was like uh, the the lack of respect that you see sometimes is... is For someone that's done martial arts for a long time, it, it, it almost makes you sick in your stomach to see the, the lack of respect yeah. that goes along with the fighting. It's kind of like this is what exactly yes. what I was taught not to be like, you know? Uh, That's not, right. To not I, be boastful, to be humble in victory, and um, yeah, you know, and you do see that on occasion. We talked about yeah. Laido Machida and some of the other martial classic uh, Georges Rush Saint Pierre. Yep. He's huge up here in Canada. Yep. That guy, very martial arts oriented, very respect based. Jokishin background, by the way. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Very much so. Yep. But you got to remember. You got to remember Jokishin. too, though, that when a lot of this stuff got commercialized. It, it becomes something else. There's a lot of money involved. Mm-hmm. In yeah, yeah, money becomes involved. That's true. You got egos. It, it, it isn't so much, and I think with a lot of these guys, it isn't so much that they want to be, um, un, that they they want to to be bigger than life. It's that they feel like they have to be, because if you talk to a lot of them, it's like, yeah, he's an asshole in front of the camera. But other than that, he's a good guy. But you look, know, look at someone like Boss mm-hmm. Rutan, though, who was definitely a personality. Like if you look at Boss Rutan, yes. he is a personality, oh, yeah. but and a, a killer. 
but just seems like a super nice guy too, you know. But you know that goes. And that, saying the, too, he's also has a traditional background. He's also a Kyoto yeah. guy. Um, yeah, and and Dutch kickboxing is yeah. very much based in the in the marsh. They have a lot of those similar respects yep. and and whatnot. Yeah, and a lot of these guys have that brotherhood, like that. Oh, yeah. that, that you know they've all been. You know, they've all fought at gyms mm. with other guys. Mm. You know, it's, it, it, it isn't just them. They're not just training. You know, yes, in a sense, they are just training as them. But they've all fought against other guys in while in training, you know, in, in their fights. Mm. So it's, it's more of like a, I think, yeah, you've got the one-offs that are dickheads. And you're going to have those. But, you know, Muhammad Ali... For instance, you know, this goes back, you know, obviously, and it's a boxing guy, but he was a fucking, yeah, he had a big yeah, ego, yeah, he he was bigger than life, but yeah. that's what he was trying to be yeah. in that arena. And, and he presented it in a lovable way, like, I mean, you know, almost like uh, uh, the, the, the scamp, you know, he's he had that kind of, that rogue type, you know. Uh, very much so, like, he, he got into the hearts of everybody, like, I mean, if, if you've follow the Muhammad Ali story and you're not even a fan of boxing like I mean you get a lot of life lessons out of that oh yeah and but but it goes and, back to that whole th the the whole idea Fred of you kind of can't hold it against too too many of these guys that you that you it, as you know as a martial arts you know a, a person who's been in the martial arts you know you kind of want to say ah that's disrespectful but at the same time you got to go well, it it depends. It depends on mm -hmm. where you put the focus of your training. If you put the focus on your training yeah. and learning how to fight, and then I'm sure that moment of victory feels awesome when you knock the guy out. You know what I mean? But I, I'm not. I'm not talking about. Trust like, me, there's a lot of guilt afterwards. You just too, gonna, you're just gonna look at it this way, though. If if you've got a guy that that literally hands another guy's ass to him, right? And and mm -hmm. it's at the end of the fight, and he's just sitting there like, yeah, it was no big deal. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I understand that. I guess that's not like being happy that you won, and you know, being, oh, you know, thanks all the fans. Oh, that's that's not the problem. It's like uh, the disgrace to your opponent while the fight is still going on. Like we were talking about earlier, the guy's mm -hmm. unconscious, and you're just smashing oh, yeah, his head. Oh yeah, yeah, that that then, shit. Like, don't you understand that there's repercussions for that? That that guy's gonna not not just lose, but he's gonna be like seriously fucked up at some point in his life because of that. You know what I mean? That's not uh, right. But that goes back to the whole idea of you know this this tradition has that respect right you know like yeah. i'm it's it, you know it's the whole idea of i'm not going to attack an unarmed guy he's down he's defenseless he's you armed. know yeah. i'm done until yeah, yeah. and if he's going to stand up and be a man and face me again then so be it but until then but his eyes are in the back of his head you know <laughs> right you know, like he's not getting up like <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the thing so i mean i get that aspect of it but as far as like you know boasting you know shit like that i guess you kind of have to to me, you have to kind of give him a little bit of leeway in that aspect. But I see your point as far as it being, you know, a respect thing. Because it goes back to that tradition of, okay, this is what I've gotten myself into. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, but now it's an entertainment thing. Yeah. Well, see, we've been talking about like the the Joe Rogan podcast because he's MMA oriented. I mean, the guy does the announcing for the UFC, and he talks about this a lot. And Corey, you were mentioning it too. Like, I mean, I think over time, mixed martial arts, the MMA we know, is going to have to change. I think a lot of the sports that we have, because of the science that we're discovering of like brain damage, basically the trauma that these guys are suffering, um, and how it, like you said, like I mean. Bisping, you know, he got an extra shot to the the after Dan Henderson knocked him out. He might he's going to have instant rep, repercussions from that shot, but he's also going to have prolonged problems down the road. Like they're finding NFL guys now, like that played 20, 30 years ago because of the repetitive concussions that they suffered, are now like they're they're almost mentally impaired. Right. And I think that that I hope I hope that that will help change. I don't know how mixed martial arts will will evolve in that way but I, I i think personally that you know seeing more of the the martial arts part of it come back in you know where you do honor the fact that you know what if we're gonna have to fight and one of us has to be defeated i'm not going to try to hurt you i'm, I'm going to try to beat you but i'm not going to try to hurt you and i think a lot of these mma guys they get that confused and they do try to hurt each other yeah and 
yeah, you're getting paid. Yes, that's your profession. But I mean, at the end of the day, we're all humans. And I mean, I don't know, you, you punch somebody out. Yeah, you're going to, like you said, you're going to instantly feel gratified. But if you're if you're not a psychopath, you're going to feel guilt and, and other issues later on. Like, what if that had been me? You know what I mean? And what if instead of one shot, the guy went and grabbed a, you know, a big rock and smashed my head in because he's so pissed off? I, right. I know that's kind of dark, but... I mean, that kind of stuff gets weeded out when you go to a martial arts program, a good one, uh, with a good sensei and a good backing support system. And a lot of the, at least up here in Canada, a lot of the mixed martial arts gyms are hybrids now. Like, they're really, they're like, you will have, like you said, the karate as well as MMA. Um, and I think, like Chris was saying, too, a lot of that is, you know, people are are enticed by MMA. And most don't want to go and, and bang it out hardcore, but they do want to be physically active. And... You know what? You go to one of these gyms because it says MMA, and you fall in love with uh, jo uh, judo, or you fall in love with uh, grappling, or you decide you like Muay Thai kickboxing, and you can express yourself in that way. Well, it, I I just thought it was amazing that when that came onto the scene, I was never big into fighting. Like I took you know the fucking Shotokan karate when I was a kid. You know I I I did it just to go through the motions really. But when UFC yeah. when UFC came on the scene, and you know you and I were talking about it, and you see this little fucking guy, hoist fucking Gracie, this boa yep. constrictor of a fucking man, just if he gets a hold of you, you're fucked. And it took forever for people to be able to fight him, or to fight that yeah. family. Forget fucking him, that family. Well, and here's the thing that we're seeing now, like those guys that are just traditional BJJ, like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, if they were to fight in an MMA contest, and we saw it a while ago when Hoist came back and fought Matt Hughes, who was a Greco or grappling wrestling American wrestler. And uh, we got guys now who understand the Jiu Jitsu. So some of the techniques that you relied on, they're no longer valid in that type of environment. Don't get me wrong. I mean, Hoist would choke me out in a matter of seconds, and most people. But if you're fighting in a, an environment where you're allowed to punch and you're allowed to use, uh, you know, your 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 strength in other ways, you're gonna end up getting hurt, which is what we saw, unfortunately. Did Did either of you guys hear the Joe Rogan podcast where he talked about um, uh, Josh Waitzkin? Maybe I don't know. He's the he was the kid that. Um, he was in that, uh, not in the movie. He was the the movie's based on him. Uh, Searching for Bobby Fischer. He was a chess player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So he he got. I don't know if he got into his teenage years or whatever, but all of a sudden he decided to get into mixed martial arts and he decided to apply chess, what he'd learned in chess, to martial arts, mm -hmm. and how well he was doing with that. Mm -hmm. Like his ability to think moves ahead in a fight, and. Um, Rogan was talking about it, and I, you guys would find it fascinating. The two of you guys would find it fascinating. As we were talking about it, I was thinking about that. So if you got, either of you guys can find that, you'd probably love that episode that he talks about that. I think I've watched bits of it, or I, I remember a little bit, but yeah, I'm definitely going to check it out again. Yeah, and... and Because and I find chess and martial arts go hand in hand. Like, I play chess... Uh, I don't play chess anymore very often, but I used to when my son was younger. Uh, he was really big into it and was really good. And uh, I found that it's very it's very strategic, um, much well, it, like martial arts. Well, it goes it goes along with that whole idea of you know that clear thought. You know, uh, thinking moves ahead. Yeah, thinking you know moves yeah. ahead, being you know in the moment. Um, you know that that whole idea of a meditative state while fighting, and and I love the idea of it. I'm not that guy. I've never been that guy. You know, I'm I'm no. not you know I'm not that person, but it fascinates me these people that can you know these guys like fucking Bruce Lee, who was just a fucking, uh, as far as I'm concerned, a monster of a guy. You know, it yep. wasn't it wasn't just his his skill. He was driven to be as good as he could fucking be. And it pisses yep. me off so bad. I watch that movie, The Fucking Dragon, and they show him yes. fucking getting hurt in a fucking fight, and it was never a fight. Like, he fucked himself up, yep. fucking lifting yep. weights. <laughs> because yep. he was just a fucking animal. Like, he wanted he to was. be so good. But it's that drive. It's, it's, it's that thing, I think, inside 
when you get into these traditions where you want to better yourself it's a it's a it's a you know a, a self betterment process you know it, and all of these you know traditional systems have it everything yep it, it, it's all all about self betterment you know know thyself or you know whatever but i just, i always find it fascinating you know these guys like you Corey, that can you know put yourselves in that mindset you know hey i'm gonna fucking get hit you know, I, I, fuck, I don't want to get hit. I've been hit. I've been punched in the face a, like a few fucking either. times. I didn't like it. I stay away from that shit as often yep. as possible. And that's what I think, like, with mixed martial arts, like, I mean, it's a very young man-oriented game with a lot of athleticism, whereas martial arts and traditional martial arts are something that, like, I mean, you can do for life, like, uh, right up until you're 80, 90, as long as you're physically capable, you can practice martial arts. Whereas, I mean, you cannot practice getting punched in the head in your 40s. I, I don't suggest it. Um, like, I mean, I got punched a couple times in my 20s and I didn't like it. So it, it, it's a tough one. And that's why I think, like, martial arts will stay and be more traditional, whereas mixed martial arts, I think, should adopt more of that. And, and, and you'll see less of these guys getting uh, their brains scrambled. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, back to what Chris was saying about... Uh, you know, if you train in martial arts and your whole goal is to be able to just, you know, kick people's asses, probably, you know, what have you got? Five, ten years of training really hard like that before sure. your body is, like, spent, you know? But if you're yep. going with the mindset that, yeah, I'm, I'm doing this to better myself, I'm doing this to move to a different, let's get a little woo-woo here, I'm moving <laughs> on to a different level of my evolution, you know? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm trying to move yeah. myself to a different level, Fuck then, it, then yeah. you can do it forever because you yep. keep discovering more and more about yourself and... Uh, if you want to talk about like mystical practices, isn't that kind of what it's all about? Is like turning the alchemical uh, detritus into gold, you know? Like, uh... <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. It's 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 all it's it's a transformation. It's it, if you look at it at a base level, you, the idea is you're a fucking caterpillar. Yep. And you're trying to become the butterfly. But some people don't ever want to stop being the caterpillar. Some right. people are like, it's easy to be the caterpillar man sitting here munching. Well, yeah, they were the big caterpillar on the leaf. They got to eat what they want. Yeah. They got to kick the other caterpillars off. And All of a sudden, afraid, they and, find And it. they're always afraid to make that transition. <laughs> no one wants to be the and butterfly. And then they make the transition, <laughs> and they realize they're a fucking moth. <laughs> like, oh, shit. Yeah, but, but some moths look pretty fucking cool, Fred. A moth can still oh, fly, yeah, man. They you're, do. Still, you're still stuck That's on that right. leaf. That's right, yep. All right, now that yep. now that we've fucking gone to Alice in Wonderland, we'll wrap this shit up. Corey, uh, what what is the name of your uh, dojo again? It's called Enchin Karate of Maine. If you want to hit me up on Facebook, it's facebook.com slash Enchin Maine, E-N-S-H-I-N. Um, it's probably the easiest way to reach me. I won't give you my email address or anything. But uh, <laughs> I'll let everyone come in and try a couple classes for free. You can see what it's like. It's a, it's a atmosphere of training hard, but there's a lot of respect as well. We all shake hands and smile and laugh after class. Um, yeah. Yeah, and if anybody, I know we do have some people that listen in uh, Southern Maine. Uh, well, we have a few people all over Maine, but uh, if you can share this stuff around uh, for Corey, he's trying to get this stuff off the ground. And um, yeah, I'm trying to raise some money for my. Uh, I've got a GoFundMe thing going too. That's on the web page. Um, just trying to get some money going for advertising, so I can get like more people to know that I'm out there. Uh, I'm trying to just do it from like. I started this thing with no money, you know. I still have pretty much no money, so. Uh, yeah, he's he's really uh, Corey's really grinding this shit out. So if anybody can give him any help, I mean, even if you're not in the area, uh, hit him up on Facebook, uh, give him a like. Share uh, I'll again. I'll share it on I'll share it in the different groups. Um, so if any of you guys want to hit it up, um, but you know, like I said, I've known Corey for a few years. Great guy. Um, he's I think he's got a good thing going on here. And uh, we, we've, as with anybody, everybody's got differences of opinion, but uh, him and I definitely found a, 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 a baseline of stuff that we were, you know, kosher with. But, uh, you know, it, 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 it is what it is. And I, I wanted to at least give a, get a chance to promote him and, uh, and talk about these things that I thought that we should bring to the table on the show anyway. But um, it was good to have you by, Corey. Yeah, thanks for um, watching. And, uh, as always, Fred, 
It's hey, it was awesome. It's fun. Nice talking to you, Corey. Yeah, nice talking to you too, man. Um, Thank you too, Chris. Yeah, uh, well, you know. You do give you do give me some pretty good artwork, Fred. There we go. As always, check out Fred's artwork at youtube.com forward slash dreadfun. That's D-R-E-D-F-U-N-N. Um, this has been episode, uh, I think it's 47 of the 40th Slip Daily, Weekly, Something Dose. This has been the Sweep the Leg Johnny episode. <laughs> nice. If you like this shit, hit the like button. Between that and Bigfoot portals, it's a good day. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't, hit the thumbs down button, leave a comment, subscribe. Don't hit the thumbs down button. Thumbs up. Like I said, hit up uh, Fred. Check out Corey's uh, Ancient Karate like page. Give him a like. If you can, throw him some money at his GoFundMe page. Please. Thanks for listening, folks. As always, it's a fun time. Goodbye.